Hey guys, this is Felix from LowPowerLab.com and in this video I'd like to show you how I modified an aquarium air pump to make this uh, manual SMD pick and place apparatus to help me with assembling my PCB boards. I've seen uh, someone else build something similar so I decided to give this a try and as it turns out it's a very effective tool for assembling uh, PCBs. It's much better than um, assembling under a microscope using tweezers or something similar like that. So uh, what this is, it's a regular aquarium pump that I bought from uh, the local pet store. Nothing special about it. Um, I just opened this up and you'll probably find an air intake in here. And I bought a bunch of uh, aquarium air hose that I ran through a hole that I drilled on the side. And then I attached the hose to that air intake. And I used a rubber seal and a bunch of silicone to make it airtight. And then at the other end, I used this syringe. Uh, and the syringe comes with uh, a rubber seal that I poked with the uh, air hose to make it airtight. And I also applied a bunch of silicone just to make sure this is uh, sealed. And then the tip is a uh, syringe needle that I cut and bent at an angle that's convenient for uh, picking components. And also, uh, finally, one of the most important parts of this is I drilled a hole on the side of the syringe cylinder and that acts as a pressure switch. And as long as I keep it covered, um, there's going to be vacuum and components will be picked up. But uh, as soon as I uncover it, even partially, components will drop off. So this is very convenient to uh, pick components up and then as soon as I want to drop them off I uncover the hole and then components will drop off. I also built this um, switched outlet. It's um, all parts from Home Depot. It's a junction box, an outlet, and a light switch. And this cord I got from a TV teardown. It's a polarized cord and what this is is making sure this only goes one way into a regular outlet to make sure that uh, the switch is always switching the hot and not the neutral. Uh, and this is very convenient for um, using it on a tabletop like with this pump. I just plug this into an outlet. I plug this pump here and then uh, whenever I want to turn it off or on I just flip the switch. So this is very convenient. Now what I'll do is I'll tear down the pump and show you what's inside and how I modified it and then later on uh, I'll show you how I actually use the pump uh, for rapid pick and placement and assembly of a couple PCBs. So here's what I did. I just, uh, there was a hole here that was uh, providing the air supply for the pump and then I just covered that with a rubber seal and then I wrapped that up in silicone let it cure for about a day and then I made a hole in, on one of the sides of the cover and then I ran the hose through that to into that um, rubber seal which keeps it tight and that's all it is it's very simple Next up I just want to show you how I actually use the pump and I will uh, spread paste on a couple boards and then uh, use my tool to pick and place all the components and and then actually bake the boards and end up with something like this, a fully assembled board. Now to spread the paste I use this homemade SMD metal stencil that I made from a soda can. You can see my other video tutorials on how to make these. I'm using a solder paste that I bought online and a credit card to spread the paste. Uh, I put, I taped some uh, scrap PCBs on the table and then uh, that'll, that acts as a jig for the target PCB. So uh, this is held in place by tape. I just uh, put my PCB in there. I, I cover it with a stencil and then I wipe uh, the paste across to spread it on all the, on all the pads evenly. This works very well. It's much, much faster than trying to use things like uh, 
uh, solder paste dispensers and things like that. And that'll take forever. So you'll see this is very, very fast. So what I'm going to do is just grab some paste, mix it a little bit because I just pulled this from the refrigerator so it's kind of uh, tacky. So this likes to be um, mixed a little bit before I use it. So I'm just going to make sure the PCB is aligned with the stencil. I apply some paste and then I drag it across evenly, applying even pressure. Here it is. I also want to show you this. It's a piece of cardboard that I applied a bunch of uh, double-sided uh, tape to it so the component strips will stick to the cardboard so I don't have to mess around with uh, dumping components on the table and then half of the components will be turned upside down and have to spend a lot of time aligning the parts and turning them, things like that. Also, it's uh, very ideal for uh, polarized components like LEDs. So uh, this, this way I know that the LED is oriented uh, this way and I can easily uh, pick and place that component with, uh, with this tool on the board every time, um, saving me time and not having to look through the microscope or figure out which way the component is oriented. This is also very useful when you have components oriented on, in different ways on your board. So uh, if you have a bunch of boards that you want to assemble, you don't, you don't want to keep turning the PCBs. Instead, you can simply turn this to help you uh, pick components that are aligned this way. And then if you have components that are aligned that way, you know, perpendicular instead of uh, uh, horizontal, you, you can just turn this uh, cardboard and then pick the components and place them on the board. So I'm going to actually show you how I assemble four boards. So you see how this uh, goes. It's pretty quick. And what I do is I turn on my pump. Hopefully you can still hear me. And I'm going to start with the first component, which is the resistor. You can hear the pump in the back humming, uh, working harder when I'm creating the vacuum to pick the component and place it on the board.
And here's a, an assembled board. Again, uh, not all the components are perfectly aligned, and that doesn't really matter because uh, the solder paste reflowing will pull the components into place and align them with the, nicely with the pads, so you don't have to worry about that too much. Here's my super cheap uh, toaster oven that I use for reflowing. It, there's nothing special about it. I didn't hack it to add uh, you know, temperature control or anything like that. It's just bare bones toaster oven that I, I'm not using anymore and I just place the components inside, I turn it on, um, I use my fluke meter to measure temperature with a KT th thermocouple and then I, I just turn it on up to about 140 degrees Celsius and then I let it um, sit there for about a minute and a half or two minutes. That temperature will still climb to about 160 and then it will start, start dropping. At that point I turn it back on until it reflows. And I'm using a no clean unleaded uh, solder paste, so this will reflow at around 220 de uh, degrees Celsius. So at this point I'm uh, turning it off. Temperature will still climb to about 160 degrees and then start dropping. So that takes about a minute and a half uh, to happen and then uh, at that point I will just turn the oven back on and just let it uh, climb up to 220 degrees uh, where it should reflow. We're at 200 degrees right now and I'll start watching for uh, the parts to reflow. Not sure how visible this is going to be but I'm going to do my best. When the parts reflow, they're gonna, the joints are going to turn shiny, and it's pretty obvious. We're at 217, and the parts just reflowed. You can see how nicely they're aligned uh, with the pads right now. So I'm just going to open the door slowly and let cool air go in. I don't like to uh, take these out uh, too sudden because uh, that might cause a uh, temperature uh, shock and damage the dyes. And also, uh, if the solder is not uh, solidified, it might jerk the parts off the pads. So I like to uh, let it cool down for like a minute before I pull them out. Here's a finished PCB. All the components seem to be pretty well aligned and I'm pretty satisfied with the outcome. And I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you will get inspired to build uh, a tool similar to this to help you with uh, hand placement of SMD uh, components. It will be much faster in my opinion compared to uh, tweezers and a microscope. Uh, this whole setup probably cost me around $20 for the pump, the hose and then this um, switched outlet that I built to help me uh, switching on the pump. So uh, it's very low cost and you should probably try it. It'll only take you like an hour to modify the pump and then another half hour to build a junction box like this. Or you could even plug this in directly. Uh, you don't have to build this and then uh, your cost will be around $15. Uh, thank you for watching and Please subscribe to my channel to get updates when I post new videos and check out my blog at lowpowerlab.com. Catch you next time.